Want to know a secret about me? If I were left to my own devices, I would avoid money until I absolutely had to look at it or think about it or talk about it. I'm dead serious. I'm Lindsay, I'm a financial therapist. I help people the intersection of money and mental health, AKA financial wellness, and I am breaking down different money archetypes and helping you learn more about why we do what we do based on our psychology. According to Dr. Brad Klontz, there are four different money scripts. However, with these four different money scripts, a lot of them are rooted in what is bad or what is wrong with you and why you are disordered in your relationship with money. I come from a strengths-based perspective, which means that I like to look at how are the different things that we are doing protecting us, helping us, and keeping us safe. I'm gonna be diving into one of the money archetypes that I use in my work with clients that is more holistic and helps you to be kind and compassionate to yourself. Because uh, no surprise, shaming yourself into doing things usually doesn't work. All right, so one of the four money archetypes is called blissfully indifferent. These are the people who like to pretend that money isn't really happening. They like to avoid it to procrastinate, to put it off, to not look at it, and to not think about it. And if you are thinking about this through a disordered lens, you might be going, oh my gosh, isn't that a bad thing to not think about money when we live in a system and in a society where we actually need money to survive? Uh, yeah, you probably would, which is why I don't believe in shaming people when they have this type of response to money. Statistically speaking, who is most likely to end up in this category? Women people in helping and healing professions, and people in creative professions. Why might that be? <laughs> well, we can hypothesize quite a bit, but it's no surprise that women are told that money is rude or impolite, or we shouldn't talk about it or th shouldn't think about it. It's gauche, it's fill in the blank. We've been taught from a very young age that we should not be thinking about money unless we're thinking about how to give it away or how to save it. This is true. As recently as 2017, researchers were looking at the way and how we socialize genders. Um, unfortunately, in 2017, they were just looking at male and female, or boy and girl, rather. And they found that as recently as 2017, boys were taught the power or the importance of things like entrepreneurship and of earning money and of even investing, whereas girls were taught about the importance of saving money and budgeting money for a household. Now, what about creatives and what about people in helping the healing professions? Why might they be avoidant about money? Hmm, let's think about it, shall we? People who are in helping and healing professions, things like teachers, social workers, nurses, have often been told that they do what they do because they care about the people that they are helping, not because they want to make money. And who has traditionally been in those types of positions? <laughs> It's women. So we tend to, from a very young age, talk to women differently about money, about the importance of being frugal and being smart and budgeting and saving, but we don't really talk to them about the importance of earning the damn money in the first place. They're often pushed into these fields where these feminine characteristics of caregiving and nurturing and compassion are kind of exploited and being told you're not supposed to earn money for those things. Those are just good things to do. When it comes to creatives, artists, musicians, actors, etc. Etc. there's often this idea that you're selling out if you are earning money from your art, that you should just do art out of the kindness and goodness of your creativity and you should not earn money from it. And if you do, you're a sellout. Or what did we call them in the 90s? <laughs> you're a poser, right? It's no wonder to me that these are the people that are most likely to end up in that blissfully indifferent archetype because you don't wanna think about money because it feels really, really gross. However, not all is bad. People who fall into this archetype are also more likely to be financially generous, more community oriented, and personally, I know for me, once I got things onto autopilot, my indifference around money actually benefited me because what we know is putting things like retirement or savings on autopilot tends to be good, specifically when it comes to things like investing. When I'm thinking about investing in retirement, the best thing to do is put your money in there and not really look at it till you absolutely need to or until you're ready to start withdrawing that money. 
That's because research shows that when we tend to look at our long-term investments, such as money that is invested in a retirement account, when we tend to look at it frequently, we tend to react emotionally, which makes sense. 80% of our financial decisions are driven by how we feel. So when we see that red arrow or that chart drop, we see, oh my gosh, I've lost money. I don't want to keep losing money. So I'm going to sell or get rid of the thing the, the amount of money that I have invested. And then what happens on the other side is we see the green, we see the money going up and we go, oh my gosh, I need to get in on that. Let me add money to my retirement account or add money to my investments when the money is going up, which kind of makes sense, right? We don't wanna lose money. And if we see some sort of investment picking up steam, we want to be on that train, we want to be enjoying the benefits of that profit share. But the problem is what happens is we often sell at the bottom and buy at the top, which means we are selling at a loss and we're buying things when they are more expensive. Rather than putting your money in and not really looking at it. And what happens over time is yes, you have those waves of up and down. You have those times when your investments earn money and when your investments lose money. But over time, we tend to see this line go up and to the right of earning money over time on those investments. But if you are looking at it all the time, you're going to act from a reactive place and you're more likely to make investing decisions that aren't super smart, which is why being blissfully indifferent can be fantastic when it comes to investing. Being blissfully indifferent can also be great when it comes to savings. I shared in my money routines video that I have everything on auto pay for my bills and auto save for my saving and for my investing. When I talk about auto saving and why it can be great for blissfully indifferent is that yeah, it can feel icky and overwhelming to get into your bank account and to set these things up. But what I do is I have money moving every single month from my checking account into my various savings accounts that are aligned with my different savings goals. And that money is moving every single month to start filling those buckets. And because I'm a little less likely to get in there and get in the weeds all the time, I'm less likely to turn off that auto save, which means that I'm saving without really thinking about it, which is where being blissfully indifferent can be super, super beneficial. The other way that I love being blissfully indifferent is that once I reframed my relationship with money and once I started cultivating a healthy relationship with money, it no longer seemed like this big, scary, dark gremlin in the room. It really started feeling like, what can I give and receive? How can this money feel reciprocal? How can this money feel regenerative? And how can I trust that when I earn more money and spend and save, it goes in this beautiful cycle where I'm able to take care of myself, purchase things that are aligned with my values and give back to my community and give back to causes that really matter. That shifted everything for me instead of feeling like I'm earning money to hoard it for myself, which felt icky into I'm taking care of myself. And when I'm able to take care of myself, I'm able to spend money in alignment with my values. And so having that connection and being able to rewrite it really fits in nicely to this blissfully indifferent narrative. How do you know if you are blissfully indifferent? I'm going to give you a few statements and I want you to think without judgment, does this sound like a thought that I have or a thought that I believe? And then I'm going to give you a series of behaviors and I want you to lovingly again, ask yourself, are these things that I tend to do? Some statements that you might find yourself thinking are things like, if I want more than just enough, I'm being selfish or I'm being sleazy. If I make more money, I'm abandoning my immigrant roots, my working class roots, or my neighborhood that I was raised in. Money is so uncomfortable. If I can just avoid it, then I would feel better. It's not okay to have financial desires when the world is so unjust. Those are some thoughts you might have. Now, what about some of these behaviors? I don't really like looking at my bank statement. I try to avoid checking what's on my paycheck. I don't pay my bills until I absolutely have to, or I don't file my taxes until the very last moment. I tend to skirt having conversations with my partner, my parents, my siblings about money, or I avoid thinking about money. And sometimes I even find myself giving it away, either donating more than I can safely afford to, or putting things on a credit card for my friends or my family or my loved ones, even if I might not be able to pay it off. If so, you might be blissfully indifferent. As I mentioned, there are some strengths here. 
most likely you have the capacity to feel safe and feel abundant in other domains of your life. Maybe you feel very fortunate and very abundant within your relationships or with your relationship to spirit or your spirituality or maybe your body and movement. Those might be areas where you are able to have a balanced relationship with these different domains, which tells me you are able to have a balanced and healthy relationship with your money if you put a little TLC into it. If you want to find out which financial archetype you are, go to mindmoneybalance.com quiz to learn more about your unique strengths and challenges.